fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's travel on the trail ahead! The hold up went off like clockwork. That is, it did at the start. Johnny Pickett and his partners rode into the little town of Colbert, like any group of cowhands coming to cash their paychecks. At first, they weren't noticed at all. There were plenty of punchers in town on Saturday afternoon. Johnny, being the youngest and newest member of the gang, was left outside the Drover National Bank while his companions went inside. Now remember, Johnny, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, I will. When we come out of here, we're going to come a running. You understand? Sure. Sure. All right. Frank, Pete, let's go. It was Johnny's job to hold the horses until he and his partners were ready to leave. And he knew that would be in a hurry. He watched Ed Ryan, Frank Wilson, and Pete Marcus as they sauntered casually into the bank. Big, lean, hawk-eyed men with broad shoulders and cat-like strides. He waited for a moment for the sound he knew would come. The dull, coughing explosion of a 45. Instantly, Johnny swung the horses' noses from the hitch rack and pointed them toward the street. And he waited again, nerves taut. Paralysis seems to have seized the whole town. Nobody moved, and there wasn't a sound after those first two shots. Johnny found himself talking almost prayerfully. Oh, Ed, Frank, Pete, come a-running, come a-running. The paralysis didn't last long. In the next split second, pandemonium broke loose. Then Big Ed Ryan appeared suddenly in the doorway of the bank. His two guns spurted smoke and lead. Behind him came Frank Wilson with a bulging canvas sack under each arm. They dashed across the walk with Pete Marcus covering the retreat. Help Frank with one of those sacks. I'm here. But as he reached for the sack, Johnny heard the dull boom of a shotgun from across the street. He saw the outlaw stagger and gasp. Oh. Ed, Ed, uh, quick, Ed. Get Frank onto your horse and ride. Pete and I'll cover for you. Sure, I will. Easy, Johnny. Easy. They were both in the saddle. Johnny had one arm around the wounded outlaw. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw the other two men mount their horses. Then he heard Ed Ryan shout. He got a ride for it, boys. Come on. They spurred their horses into a wild run down the street. They tore past a harness shop where Johnny saw a white-haired man level a Winchester. And Ed Ryan's 45 roared, and the man crumpled to the ground. Now they were opposite the Wells Fargo Express office, and a dozen rifles opened up on them. Johnny felt Frank Wilson rock and shudder, then become a limp weight against his arm. The next moment, their horse stumbled and crashed headlong, and Johnny and Wilson hit the ground with stunning force. Ed Ryan and Pete Marcus had reached the end of the street for this time and were headed for the open country. Johnny lurched to his feet and tried to reach for his gun, but he was too dazed and numb. 
Even when men came running toward him, shouting, he didn't try to escape. He just stood there, staring down at Frank Wilson's limp body. Then a gun barrel was jammed into his back. Stick up your hands and hold them high. A few moments later, Johnny Pickett was facing the sheriff, who was leafing through a batch of man-wanted circulars. What's your name? I said, what's your name? What difference does it make? Mm. You're 21 years old, ain't you? Black hair, five foot nine. Scar on the side of your jaw. Mm. Knife do that? I don't remember. Kinda smart, ain't you? What do you want me to say? Four men were killed in that job you and your pals just pulled. You're dealing. I'll play whatever cards you give me. Yeah? If you want my private opinion, kid, I don't think you'll be in the game very long. Hey, Joe. Yeah? Lock him up. Covert was in an uproar. All afternoon, groups of men gathered on the main street and exchanged heated, ominous talk. By sundown, they seemed to have reached an agreement. The sheriff was dry-lipped and nervous as he watched them from the window of his office. He was so preoccupied that he hardly noticed two horsemen who rode up to the hitch rack in front of the door. One of them dismounted from a large white stallion. He was tall and deeply tanned. The upper half of his face was covered by a mask. His companion was a stoical Indian. They crossed the walk quickly and opened the door without knocking. What are you? Oh. Hello, Sheriff. Lone Ranger. You look worried. This is one time when you came around too late. The Drover Bank was held up this afternoon. Yes, I know. Todd and I were on the bluff outside of town. We saw the whole thing. You were there? Then why did we you... We trailed the two outlaws who got away. Yeah? But did you no, find them? No, they up? doubled back and threw us off. Somewhere in Onyx Canyon. Uh, how about the other two? And one of them is dead. The other one's back there, locked up. Is it the boy? Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah? Well, how about this? How am I going to transport him over the county seat? You mean the mob that's starting to form outside? Yeah. Not that I blame him very much for being mad. Four men were killed. Sheriff, uh, may I talk to your prisoner? Mm, yes, you can if you want to. Thanks. Wait here for me, Tonto. Ah. Right through that back door. There's only one cell. You can't miss him. I'm over here by the door for a moment. I want to talk to you. A masked man. Who are you? You're not afraid of me, are you? No. No, I... I guess you must be an outlaw, too, or you wouldn't be wearing that mask. What's your name? Why should I tell you? You don't have to tell me. Pickett. Johnny Pickett. Johnny, I saw the gunfight in the holdup. Yeah? So did a lot of other people. This was the first bank robbery you ever took part in, wasn't it? What's that to you? I saw everything that went on. You didn't fire a shot. All you did was hold the horses. How long have you been a bank robber? Why don't you go poke your nose in somebody else's business? I'm getting along all right. It's tough to get caught on your first job. Leave me alone. I've got nothing to say to you. Johnny Pickett, I don't think you're half as tough as you pretend to be. Leave me... Leave me alone. I... All right, Johnny. <laughs> little coyote, ain't he? No, I... I think he's more scared than anything else. Well, there's good reason for it. Where's my Indian friend? Oh, he went out. Said he'd be... Hello. Oh, me hear men talk. They plenty man. Say lynch boy. I knew it. I knew there was lynch talk brewing. Is there a mob tunnel? Um, plenty big. What are you going to do, Sheriff? What can I do? I'm supposed to take the prisoner to the county jail at Blue River, but... They're coming, Sheriff. They're heading this way. They're going to take that kid out and string him up. Well, maybe it's just a few that want to... You, listen! It's a lynch mob, all right. I've seen and heard too many of them. Shut that door. Bob, I thought you were going to circulate among the boys and kind of cool off this lynch talk. They won't listen. Bud Warren's at the head of it. His brother was the bank teller that was killed. Will you defend the jail, Sheriff? Defend it? Well, that's impossible. They don't, that mob will roll over us like a locomotive over a gopher. Oh, no, they won't. Yeah? I've got a lot of respect for you, Lone Ranger. But I can see you've never tackled a mob that's lynch crazy. You have the law on your side? Why put up a fight? More killing? 
Just trying to save a little coyote will hang anyway. He's entitled to a fair trial. Well, maybe he is. But the only place you'll get it is in Blue River. And I can't take him there. Why? You're almost here, Sheriff. You want to know why? That's why. That mob of bloodthirsty cowpunchers out there. Can't you deputize some of them and hold off the rest? They'll drill me even if I mention it. And what are you going to do? I, I'm going to quit. I've got a wife and two kids to think about. There's a badge and a gun and a key. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you leave, make me a deputy. I'll take the prisoner to the county jail of Blue River. <laughs> the badge is there. You or anybody else can have it. I'm getting out of here. Give me those keys, Tonto. Uh, yeah. Oh. Come here, Johnny. I need your help. You need me? I've got to get you out of here and into a cell in the county jail. The mob. And to do get... it, I'll have to trust you quite a lot. Now, how about it? I don't know who you are, mister, but I'll do anything you say. All right, we'll have to move fast. Over there on a hook are some chaps in a leather shirt. Put them on instead of the ones you're wearing. I will. I mean, yes, sir. Are they here, Tonto? Uh, many men outside and they got rope. They won't use it if we can prevent them. Tonto. I want you to go in the back room and put on the clothes that Johnny takes off. Huh. Take a horse in the stables and wait there until I signal you. Tonto, do it. They'll follow you, but you can lose them. Huh. These duds don't fit very well. They're all right. Now, hurry, Tonto. Uh, Tonto, go. Now, Johnny, I want you to pin this deputy's badge on your shirt. Well, you mean I'm going to... here's the gun the sheriff left. Remember, I'm trusting you, Johnny. I don't know why you're doing it, but I won't forget. Pin that badge up high so it can be seen. There. Now, come on, we're going outside. In front of them lynchers? No, I, no, Come I on, can't. Johnny. Come on, be a man. All right. A masked man, an outlaw. He's wearing the sheriff's badge. Who's the other army? Must be a deputy. Where's the sheriff? I'm the sheriff here for the time being. We want that murder you've got locked up inside. He's in the hands of the law. We're the law when it comes to coyotes like him. I think you're an outlaw, too. Why are you wearing that mask? I'm also wearing a badge that represents the law. Uh, let's rush him. I'm warning you, men. Come one step further and I'll shoot. We'll shoot, too. You mean you shoot decent citizens to protect a bank robber and a killer? I'll shoot to uphold the law. Uh, he's bluffing. Let's get him. You want me to kill no, him? No, Johnny, don't draw your gun. We can not defeat him. Yeah, but we can't fool him much longer. Yes, we can. I've just signaled Tonto. Tonto? Who's Tonto? My Indian friend. Listen. Look there, man. That rider, go after him. Ah, it's a trick. Don't fall for it. You think the bank robber is still in jail? Here are the keys. Go in and find him. Uh, listen, stranger. I, for one, don't like the high-handed way you're talking. I don't think you're the sheriff. And I don't think the hombre who rode away is the kid we're going to lynch. They're the keys to the jail. We'll come in and look for him. That's what we'll do, but first I... Oh! You're not hurt. I just shot the gun out of your hand. Does anyone else want to throw some lead? Maybe he's right. Maybe that was the varmint who rode away. Well, either that's the South Trail. We can head him off the canyon. Then what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go. Come on. Really breaking up. Yeah, so far so good. But it isn't far enough. Well, what See are we going to do? White stallion, the paint tied to the hitch rack? Yeah. We'll walk over there and mount, but not fast enough to attract attention. Now, come on. What'll they do when they catch your Indian friend and find out it's not me? I don't think they'll ever catch him. Here we are. You take the paint. <clears throat> no, we are seen leaving town. Daddy, big fella. <laughs> yes, Johnny. By that time, we'll have a head start. A good head start. Come on, Silver. Get on, boy. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger and his outlaw prisoner galloped out of Cobert, they knew it would be only a short time until they were followed. The men in the posse would soon realize they'd been tricked. But what the masked man and the boy didn't know was that two other men had watched them bluff the lynch mob. Two men who had circled back from a canyon trail to wait in the shadows not far from town. It was Ed Ryan and Pete Marcus. They had returned to Cobert to help Johnny break jail, but now they were puzzled. What do you make of that, Ed? I don't know. Guess the sheriff thought up the stunt so we could take the kid over to Blue River. First time I ever saw a lawman wearing a mask. Well, who else could it be? I don't know. Whoever he is, we got to get the kid out of his hand. Yeah. What do we do, trail him? No. They're heading for Blue River. We can take a shortcut and waylay him at Brighton. That masked man might recognize yeah, us. We'll stop at the camp and change duds. Come on, get up there. Come on, get up there. And in the meantime, the Lone Ranger and Johnny Pickett rode steadily southward. They cut through a pass in the Komochi Range, then angled across a broad slope that lay directly back of a little mountain town called Brighton. But before they reached the village, the masked man reined up suddenly. Oh, oh, there, boy. Oh, oh, there, boy. Oh. Uh, this is where we stop, Johnny. Yeah? Pretty big fella. I mean, this is as far as we ride. We'll walk into Brighton. <clears throat> well, why walk? Because there'd be a posse on our trail before morning. Tracking horses might slow them up. You mean you're going to turn the stallion and the paint loose? They know what to do, don't you, Silver? Wait a minute, boy. Come here. Steady now. I, I guess I ain't got any right to be curious, mister, but would you mind telling me why you're tying knots in that lasso? Not at all, Johnny. I'm writing a note to my Indian friend, Tonto. Writing? You mean those knots Silver are... Silver and Scout will go back to our camp. When Tonto gets there, he'll see this rope and read the message. I told him what I'm doing and where we're going. Well, I'll be done. All right, Silver. Straight back to camp, old fella. You too, Scout. Now, Johnny, go ahead for town. Gosh, I... I've never known anybody like you before. Come to think of it, you haven't told me much about yourself. Where are you from? Croton City. Are your folks there? I... I haven't got any folks. My pa was shot for stealing beef. Oh. How long ago? I don't know. Before I could remember... I was raised in an orphanage until I was 14, and then I ran away. Where did you go? I got a job on a spread down south. It was a hideout for horse thieves. I didn't know that. Did you leave? Tried to. They used a whip on me and a knife. That's where this scar on my face came from. And uh, what have you been doing since then? Riding the back trails. It's no wonder. Now listen, Johnny. Don't run away this time. When we get to Blue River, face this thing out and get a new start. Yeah, at the end of a rope. Well, if that's the verdict, face it. It's no worse than coughing your life out in the dust, like the outlaw who died this afternoon. Well, it's easy for you to say that. Once you're on the square, it'll be easy for you, too. Nobody will trust me. I did. And so will anyone else. If you'll let them, will you? I'll go all the way with you, mister. Thanks, Johnny. Now, look, this is the road to Blue River. The stage will be along here any minute. I want you to hail it. Are we going to ride the stage? That's the last place the posse will look for us. Ah, here it comes now. You hail it, and I'll be right behind you. This mask might give the driver the wrong impression. <laughs> I never thought I'd be riding a jail in a stagecoach. Better than a lynch mob. And, uh, Johnny, I think you better let me handle that gun. Sure. Here. Hey! Hey, wait! room for a couple of passengers of Blue River? We got more room than anything else. Climb in. Come on, mister. <laughs> Get along, you critters. Let's roll. Get up there. Get up there. A short time later, a lumbering stagecoach pulled into the little mountain town of Brighton. Whoa, 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 you're whoa, whoa, it was an important stop because the express company shipped gold from Brighton to Blue River. And tonight, as usual, a heavily armed guard stood beside a strong box on the waiting platform. Just a minute, Dan. I'll help you lift it. <coughs> a little bit late, ain't you? Yeah, I had to stop and pick up a couple of passengers. What's the matter? Get lonesome? No. Two traveling men been keeping me company. Where are they? <laughs> 
around here someplace. <laughs> uh, they're riding into Blue River with you. Well, they better show up, because I'm pulling out pronto. Come on, climb up. I was just talking to them a they minute ago. Room for two more in that rattle trap? Here they are. If you're going to Blue River, get in. I can't waste time talking. <laughs> All right, Grandpa. Come on, Pete. <laughs> Johnny Pickett stared in amazement. The two men who were getting into the stagecoach wore dark broadcloth suits and stiff hats. They might have been prosperous cattle buyers. He recognized them instantly. Ed Ryan and Pete Marcus. You all sit down there? Yeah, all set. Get along, you critters. Let's roll. Get up there. stagecoach rumbled along the winding road into the valley, Johnny Pickett's mind was in a turmoil. Ed and Pete have discovered that this masked man is taking me to jail, he thought. They're running an awful big chance to help me. What'll I do? After all, they are trying to help, and the man with the mask is taking me to jail. Get up! Get along there! Get up there! Several minutes went by as the stagecoach thundered along through the dark, and Johnny's mind was still filled with unanswered questions. Suppose he tried to warn the man who was sitting beside him. No, he couldn't do that. Ed Ryan was watching him like a hawk. Still, the masked man could draw and shoot faster than anyone he'd ever seen. Another question presented itself. Were his two partners on this coach to save him from going to jail? Or were they after the gold in the express box? What did he do? Only one thing was certain. Whatever he had did would have to be done quickly. Suddenly, the coach lurched forward, and Ed Ryan was thrown against him as though by accident. Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to pump you fellas. That's all right. No harm done. And in that instant, Johnny felt a gun butt thrust into his hand. He hit it quickly to side. Now he had a gun. It would be three against one. Why should he go to jail and maybe have his neck broken with a rope? Still, the man with a mask trusted him. And he had saved his life from the lynch mob. But what was that when he had a chance for freedom? Suddenly, Johnny Pickett realized what he must do. He clutched the gum firmly in his hands, steeled himself, and spoke quickly to the man beside him. Look at over there. Somebody riding ahead of us all. All right, Johnny, I don't see. Good work, Ken. I'll say it was. Didn't expect us to show up, did you, Johnny? Not exactly. You had to save your own neck. Yeah, we never let a pal down. Saw you in this badge coat to get away from the lynch mob, and, well, we figured you'd come through Brighton. But we were sure surprised when we saw you in this coat. <laughs> so we ditched our horses and came along. And this is one time, Ed, that helping a pirate is going to pay off. That money box the guard put aboard is loaded with gold. Yeah. Well, what do we do now? Well, we get Grandpa to stop this thing, and then we get the money. We can unharness the team and use them for a getaway. Well, how about him? <laughs> him? <laughs> you mean the lawman with the mask? <laughs> well, he looked pretty comfortable where he is, there on the floor. That clip on the head really put him away. Yeah. It did, didn't it? Yeah. Hey, let's stop this thing, Pete. Sure. Hey, pull up, will you? Whoa, 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 boy. Whoa, whoa. What's wrong back there? My partner's sick. Can't stand this choking rattle trap. Let's rest a minute. It ain't my fault, Bob. You either ride or walk. Make up your mind. But this man is sick. He's not able to ride. Are you, Ed? Well, I'm... Feeling mighty bad. Sorry, strangers, but I've got a schedule to keep, and I'm going. The only thing you'll keep, Grandpa, is them flippers of yours. Up in the air. Dan, he's got a gun. It's a hold up. I see him now. <laughs> Another one will knock him off his perch, Ed. Yeah. Still want to argue about it, Grandpa? I, I, I just sit there and keep your paws pointed straight up. Johnny. Yeah. Climb up there and throw off that money box. I'll keep the old man covered. Pete, you better start unhitching that chain. I'll have it done in a minute. What's the matter with you, kid? Climb up there. I'm going. As he climbed over the big wheel of the stagecoach and up to the seat where a frightened driver sat with his hands in the air, Johnny's mind was working rapidly. He couldn't use his gun because Ed Ryan was watching him intently, and Ryan was a dead shot. There was only one thing to do. Jump backwards and jump fast. What? No, I've got you covered, Ed. If you make one move, I'll drill you. Hey, what's the matter? Have you gone plumb low? Your gun, they're on the ground. Kick it over this oh, way. Oh, so this is the way you pay us back for keeping you from being hung. Why, you Kick little... the gun, Ed, or I'll shoot. Uh, that's better. Now I'll You'll just... You'll grab a handful of sky, kid. Oh, Peter! Got him in the leg, Ed. Good enough. You should have killed the little coyote. We can take care of that later. Stand where you are, both of you. The masked man! Why that? Oh, my hand! Sure, that hurts. My bullet just knocked your gun away. Mister, are you really all right? I'm all right, Johnny. It's you I'm worried about. Well, shucks, one slug in my leg ain't nothing. Can you walk? <laughs> Pretty good. And we'll continue our trip to Blue River. Two more prisoners. 
That is, if the driver's not hurt. I'm all right, stranger. Just a mite scared, that's all. There's nothing more to be scared of. But maybe you don't understand it. It was me that clipped you on the head. Yes, I know, Johnny. I know why you did. Don't you remember? We're uh, two men who trust each other. Oh, gosh, I... Listen. Now there's no doubt that we'll get to Blue River. Well, who is it? Tonto was Silver and Scout. Oh, Scout, hold on. Tonto. Tonto, uh, come here, Johnny. What happened to the lynch mob from Covert? Me lose them fast. Go to camp. Silver there, get message. Me ride. That's good, Tonto. You got here just in time. You in trouble? Not now, Tonto. Johnny and I'll ride inside the stagecoach to keep an eye on these outlaws. You follow us with the horses. Ah. Open the door, Johnny, for two bank robbers. Yeah. Get in, you two. All right, all right. All right. The guard, he's hurt pretty bad, but I've got him back up in the box with me. Good. All right, driver. Come on, you critters. Let's roll. Get up there. Get up. Get up. You the sheriff? Mash man, who are you? I have three prisoners for you, sheriff. Bank robbers from Covert. Bank robbers? You receive papers on them in a few days. In the meantime, lock them up. Yes, Silver. I'll do that. Wait a minute, mister. I want to talk to you. Steady, big fella. <coughs> of course, Johnny. What is it? Well, I'm going to stand trial here. Whatever the verdict is, I'm going to face it square. Just like you said. I'm glad to hear you say that, Johnny. But I knew you would. I don't think your sentence will be very hard. I'll uh, talk to the judge. Uh, tell me, how'd you know I was going to say that? Because I knew you were a man, Johnny, and uh, real men can be trusted. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Hey, who is that man? Ain't he the Lone Ranger? I don't know who he is, Sheriff. All I know is that he's the greatest friend a kid like me ever had. Oh. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.